Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is AC bridge network analysis. Our objective is to examine a type of complex AC circuit known as a bridge network. We'll learn to analyze bridge networks by applying our previous understanding of delta and y conversions and Thevenin's theorem. The circuit operates under the presumption that the viewer has more than a passing familiarity with both delta and y conversions featuring complex impedances and AC Thevenin's theorem, as illustrated in the delta and y conversions featuring complex impedances and AC Thevenin's theorem lectures, available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet, or only dimly recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. If you recall, from way back in the Basic Electronics 1 DC Circuit Analysis playlist, a complex circuit is an arrangement of elements that feature occasions in which elements are neither purely in series nor purely in parallel with one another. The classic example of a complex circuit is a bridge network consisting of five impedance elements, where two pairs of stacked elements form the uprights of the bridge, Zm and N on the left, and Zp and Zq on the right. And the fifth element, Zx, is the decking of the bridge spanning the chasm between the two uprights. You'll note impedance element Zm is not purely in series with impedance element Zn in the left upright because of the influence of the bridge impedance element Zx. Any current entering Zm does not necessarily travel through Zn because some of it can travel through Zx. Similarly, you'll note that impedance Zp is not purely in series with impedance element Zq in the right upright because of the influence of the bridge impedance element Zx. Any current entering Zp does not necessarily travel through Zq because some of it can travel through Zx. Also note that neither the top nor bottom pair of impedance elements, Zm and Zp, and Zn and Zq, are purely in parallel with one another because of the influence of the bridge impedance element Zx between them. In summary, this is a complex circuit because there exists no purely series nor purely parallel paths but rather a complex web of paths that necessitate simplification or alternate analysis techniques. Two methods can be used to analyze bridge networks. The first necessitates the use of a delta to y conversion, and the second necessitates the use of Thevenin's theorem. Ideally, the viewer already has ample experience with both these techniques, and as such, I'm encouraging you to get actively involved and treat this lecture as you would a series of illustrated example problems. If you feel you're capable of arriving at the answers by yourself, by all means, pause the lecture and do so. If your answers don't match those illustrated, by all means, feel free to rewind the lecture and correct any mistakes you may have made. Let's first examine bridge network analysis scenarios, making use of the delta to y conversion. Consider a 120 volt 60 hertz AC source supplying a bridge network consisting of five impedance elements. Zm, the top left upright of the bridge, is 270 ohms at an angle of 25 degrees. Zn, the bottom left upright of the bridge, is 240 ohms at an angle of 0 degrees. Zp, the top upright of the bridge, is 270 ohms at an angle of 25 degrees. And Zq, the bottom right upright of the bridge, is 100 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. And finally, Zx, the bridge span itself, is 270 ohms at an angle of 25 degrees. Let's say we're being asked to solve for the voltage across and the current through the bridge element Zx. Key to the solution of this problem making use of equivalency between delta and y configurations is to determine the nodal voltages of the bridge element Zx. Let's call these nodes A and B. There are several places to make use of an equivalency between delta and y configurations in our bridge network. First, one can convert the y configuration of Zm, Zx, and Zn into a delta. Secondly, one could just as easily convert the Y configuration of Zp, Zq, and Zx into a delta. While easily within our reach, these Y to delta conversions wouldn't result in a simpler circuit. As such, let's consider other possibilities. One could convert the delta configuration of Zx, Zq, and Zn into a Y. One could just as easily convert the delta configuration of Zm, Zp, and Zx into a Y. Either delta to Y configuration would result in a simple series parallel circuit. This being said, you'll note impedance elements Zm, Zp, and Zx are identical. This is a balanced delta configuration, and converting to a balanced Y configuration is the easiest of tasks. If we added the third node C to the top of our delta configuration, and zoomed in in just our delta configuration, delta impedance element Zab 
is in fact element ZX between nodes A and B. Delta impedance ZBC is element ZP between nodes B and C. And finally, delta impedance ZCA is element ZM between nodes C and A. The general use descriptive formula for converting a delta impedance to a Y impedance has us multiply the two delta impedances connected to each node, then asks us to divide this by the sum of all delta impedances. Given this is a balanced delta network, all delta impedances are the same, and we can make use of the shortcut, where each balanced Y impedance is one-third the magnitude of the balanced delta impedance. ZY equals Z delta divided by 3. Substituting in our given values yields a balanced Y impedance of 90 ohms at an angle of 25 degrees. Y impedance Z1 is 90 ohms at an angle of 25 degrees. Y impedance Z2 is also 90 ohms at an angle of 25 degrees. And Y impedance Z3 is also 90 ohms at an angle of 25 degrees. Ideally, we should be able to swap out this new Y configuration with our earlier delta configuration, and the bridge circuit should be none the wiser to the substitution. Substituting our resultant balanced Y configuration for our earlier balanced delta configuration results in a purely series parallel circuit. Note that we've gained access to an additional central node. I'm calling this node Y. This being said, we've lost access to element ZX. However, if we solve for the nodal voltages at A and B, we in effect solve for the voltage differential across impedance element ZX. In this case, VA is the voltage across impedance element N, and VB is the voltage across impedance element Q. Z1 and ZN are perfectly in series with one another a simplification I'm calling Z single prime. Substituting in our given values, Z single prime has a value of 323.8 ohms at an angle of 6.7 degrees. Z2 and ZQ are perfectly in series with one another, a simplification I'm calling Z double prime. Substituting in our given values, Z double prime has a value of 102.4 ohms at an angle of negative 37.2 degrees. Despite simplifying the circuit, we've lost access to our nodes of interest, A and B. Node A is internal to combined impedance Z single prime, and node B is internal to combined impedance Z double prime. Z single prime and Z double prime are perfectly in parallel with one another, a simplification I'm calling Z triple prime. Substituting in our given values, Z triple prime has a value of 82.1 ohms at an angle of negative 27.1 degrees. Z triple prime is perfectly in series with impedance element Z3. This is a perfect setup for the voltage divider rule. Application of the voltage divider rule demonstrates that V triple prime is 63.7 volts at an angle of negative 27.3 degrees. Given V triple prime is the parallel combination of combined impedance Z single prime and Z double prime, and voltage across elements in parallel is the same, it can be said that V triple prime equals V single prime, which equals V double prime. V single prime is also 63.7 volts at an angle of negative 27.3 degrees as is V double prime, 63.7 volts, at an angle of negative 27.3 degrees. Now we need to solve for voltage division within the single prime and the double prime impedance paths. VA is the voltage across impedance element N. An application of the AC voltage divider rule solving for VA yields 47.2 volts at an angle of negative 34.1 degrees. VB is the voltage across impedance element Q. Application of the AC voltage divider rule demonstrates VB is 62.2 volts at an angle of negative 80.1 degrees. Our voltage of interest is VAB, the differential from node A to node B, where VAB equals VA minus VB. Substituting in our given values yields 44.9 volts at an angle of 50.8 degrees. Now, under the understanding that our bridge network is none the wiser to the substitution of the balanced Y for the balanced delta, we are allowed to assume that the differential from node A to node B for our earlier balanced delta configuration is also 44.9 volts at an angle of 50.8 degrees. If delta impedance ZX is between node A and B, the voltage across impedance element ZX is also 44.9 volts at an angle of 50.8 degrees. An application of Ohm's law demonstrates current through the impedance element ZX is 166.5 milliampers at an angle of 25.8 degrees. In summary, substituting a balanced Y configuration for a balanced delta configuration in a complex circuit resulted in a simple series parallel circuit, 
and the analysis of this simpler series parallel circuit mapped back to our earlier complex circuit comprised of the delta configuration yielded our desired results. Let's try the analysis of this same complex bridge circuit making use of Thevenin's theorem. If everything I've been saying to you is true, we should ideally obtain the same results. Bridge network analysis making use of Thevenin's theorem necessitates we solve for two properties, ETH, the Thevenin's equivalent voltage, and ZTH, the Thevenin's equivalent impedance seen by the load. In this case, our load of interest is element ZX. Let's start by solving for ETH, the Thevenin's equivalent voltage. First, we need to remove our load impedance of interest. In this case, we remove impedance element ZX between nodes A and B. Now we need to determine the open circuit voltage between A and B. Note the removal of impedance element ZX has fundamentally changed this complex bridge circuit to a pure series parallel circuit. Impedance elements ZM and N are perfectly in series with one another, as are impedance elements ZP and ZQ perfectly in series with one another. The series path formed by ZM and ZN is perfectly in parallel with the other series path formed by ZP and ZQ. Nodal voltage A is the voltage across impedance element N. The application of the AC voltage divider rule demonstrates that VA is 57.8 volts at an angle of negative 13.2 degrees. Similarly, nodal voltage VB is the voltage across impedance element ZQ. Application of the AC voltage divider rule demonstrates VB to be 49 volts at an angle of 93.3 degrees. The open circuit voltage between node A and B, VAB, is VA minus VB. Substituting our given values yield 69 volts at an angle of 31.1 degrees. This is our Thevenin's equivalent voltage, ETH. Let's put these values aside and solve for the Thevenin's equivalent impedance, ZTH. Solving for the Thevenin's equivalent impedance, ZTH, also necessitates we remove our load impedance of interest, in this case, impedance element ZX between nodes A and B. Solving for the Thevenin's equivalent impedance also necessitates we remove our source. This has fundamentally changed the nature of our original series parallel circuit. This may take some visualization on your part, but the removal of the voltage source by substituting a short circuit has effectively placed ZM and ZN in parallel with one another and impedance element ZP and ZQ in parallel with one another. The parallel combination of ZM and ZN, the simplification I'm calling Z single prime, is 130.1 ohms at an angle of 11.8 degrees. The parallel combination of ZP and ZQ, a simplification I'm calling Z double prime, is 110.1 ohms at an angle of negative 68.3 degrees. Z single prime and Z double prime are in series with one another. Our Thevenin's equivalent impedance is a series combination of Z single prime and Z double prime. Substituting our given values yields a Thevenin's equivalent impedance of 184.4 ohms at an angle of negative 24.3 degrees. When bridge impedance ZX is our load of interest, the Thevenin's equivalent circuit seen by the load is a series combination of ETH, the Thevenin's equivalent voltage, at 69 volts at an angle of 31.1 degrees, in series with the Thevenin's equivalent impedance ZTH at 184.4 ohms at an angle of negative 24.3 degrees. All we need to do now is substitute our load of interest, in this case, impedance element ZX. Z load is 270 ohms at an angle of 25 degrees. This simple series circuit is much easier to solve for desired voltage and current figures than our earlier complex bridge circuit. An application of the AC voltage divider rule demonstrates that the voltage across our load is 44.9 volts at an angle of 50.8 degrees. A subsequent application of Ohm's law demonstrates current through our load is 166.5 milliampers at an angle of 25.8 degrees. These are the same results that we obtained earlier using our delta to y conversion. I've got a reasonable degree of confidence our results are correct. Take a moment to compare and contrast the two methods. Which method is easier? bridge circuit analysis using a delta to y conversion, or bridge circuit analysis using Thevenin's theorem? The answer is, it depends. Given we had a balanced delta configuration, a balanced y configuration was super simple to obtain. This may not be the case for all scenarios. This being said, note we had to do an intense series parallel circuit analysis using the delta to y conversion, and this is only valid for one condition, notably when zx was 270 ohms at an angle of 25 degrees. The Thevenin's theorem, in contrast, necessitated only two steps. 
solving for the Thevenin's equivalent impedance, and solving for the Thevenin's equivalent voltage. Then it's just the application of simple series circuit properties. In my personal opinion, not only is the Thevenin's theorem a little bit less complicated than the delta to y conversion, it yields far more usable results. Notably because this Thevenin's equivalent is suitable for the analysis of any load condition, whereas the delta to y conversion was applicable to one and only one analysis scenario. This being said, both methods yielded the same results. All right, that's about it for now. In conclusion, this lecture examined AC bridge network analysis using delta y conversion and Thevenin's theorem. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. We'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.